Okay, we're going to move on now to the next lesson in the TSX configuration. We're going to do a little more advanced networking here. So we'll start with the basic system we had in the last lesson and remove the cables because now we're going to have to add some network switches uh, and a lot more uh, complexity. So the next step will be to uh, we're going to clear out the term panels because they just they don't add anything to this lesson. We add a second node processor on the left. Uh, over on the right we put in an extra chassis processor. Uh, the two cards next to the node processors are the TCP IP Modbus cards and the two cards in the middle are pulse input modules. Those are distributed I.O. modules. We've dropped in three network switches down at the bottom and the first network we're going to draw in is uh, what's called the interlink. That's uh, the only network that is um, that we see two of on the chassis processors. It goes to um, the J3 connections on the uh, node processors um, and that's the only place you'll see uh, these blue networks is uh, for this interlink. Um, then we have a yellow network that we spot in uh, that um, forms um, basically the second uh, I.O. network so it connects to the the J2 port on both of the node processors connects to only one of the chassis processors. The third I.O. network um, we're going to use a green line for that goes from the um, the J1 ports on the node processors. If you notice we've got each switch has a unique color so if you're uh, building your network and you notice that a particular switch has more than two colors on it you probably need to go back and uh, make a correction. So that's our third I.O. network going to the uh, rightmost uh, chassis processor. Okay now um, the uh, distributed I.O. boards need to be connected into the I.O. network as well. So um, we'll connect up a green network to each of those. Um, so here you see each distributed I.O. module which looks like a, an independent chassis to the processors, to the node processors, has um, a green network connected to each card. Now we're connecting to the uh, TCP IP modules. Once again, same pattern that you see for the pulse input modules. Then we go to a, uh, a yellow network for each of those distributed I.O. boards. One thing that's important with uh, these RTP systems is to use a um, an unmanaged switch for these uh, I/O networks. I'm not sure what the reason is, but apparently managed switches will uh, not coexist well with um, with these networks. Almost finished here. Okay, now we have the complete I.O. network wired up. So all the components that uh, interface to the node processor through the I.O. network have at least a uh, dual redundant connection to them. The chassis processors effectively have a triplicated network. Okay, we've spotted in uh, some additional switches because we need to set up a host network. Um, and once again, as with the previous lesson, if we only had one um, 
host computer, we really wouldn't need a, a switch, but it's always handy to have a switch in the, the system on the host network in case you wanted to come in and connect a, a PC or something, a separate laptop PC into that network. Um, we're going to go ahead and build a redundant host network since we've got two uh, node processors we can uh, have two independent host networks. Um, so we need a second computer. Now we're connected on our host network. Those other two switches over on the right side will be used to build uh, a couple of DCS uh, networks. So the top connector on each of the TCP IP boards uh, we will have configured for um, Modbus slaves. So we put in two uh, independent slave networks. We need a cup something to represent the DCS so we'll just use a couple of these PC symbols. And then each of those two computers will be wired up to those two switches. Now we have a complete system that can be used for uh, controlling a uh, steam turbine and also for um, communicating over dual networks to uh, the DCS. We're going to go ahead and uh, put in a, a Bentley Nevada chassis here to show how that would be connected in as well. Let's, uh, in this example we're going to have a TCP IP card uh, in the, the Bentley. They're available with either serial or um, TCP IP P uh, Modbus. Um, so the second port on each of those TCP IP boards would be configured as host or uh, master networks for the, uh, the Modbus uh, systems. Since we only have a simplex uh, Bentley, we're going to just put in one network, no switch. Once again, it probably makes more sense to add a switch in as well than if the customer wants to connect uh, some other devices in, they can. And if we had redundant uh, Bentley communication, we could use that second master port. So we have the Bentley chassis, dual DCS networks, three I.O. networks, we call those uh, I.O. Net 1 and 2, and then the blue network is what we call the inner link. It's used uh, also by the node processors for communication between uh, the two processors if that link is available. We have a host network. I've changed the color of one of those to brown um, so that those could be differentiated as well. Um, and then we'll just identify the two extra boards that we put in the system. And that, there you have it.